We are on. Welcome back to episode 2.5 of Lock It In, presented by All Day Media. We're back from week four. Uh, we're going to recap week four. We're going to love it. We're going to Tyler lock it in. We're going to go over the Immaculate Teaser. And then we're going to get Propolicious, who's scoring a touchdown. Before we get into week five, boys, what an electric week four. What an electric Monday night football game from the Detroit Lions. What else did we learn from week four? Yeah, how about those gritty tags? Mm. Not football, but... Yeah, no, week four, it, it was a good one. I feel like the scoring's coming back a little bit. I honestly didn't look at the numbers, but it, it felt like there were some points. And, yeah, there's a lot of money to be made on that board. Good good week for the boys. Yeah, I'm sorry for selling of, the teaser. Good week of football. Um, I would have had a perfect week, except Arthur Smith is still haunting me in a different city. So, learn my lesson. I'm going to move on to next week. Yeah, we did, I think, have a little bit of regression when it comes to the underdogs winning – Patriots got smoked by the Niners, so the first week of the of the season that the highest underdog did not win outright, nor did they cover. And I think we're starting to figure out who is who, whose identity is what, and um, the Ravens look very real is what I'm thinking. But um, we'll have to see what that looks like when they play the Bengals this week. Bengals finally get a dub, and uh, the Seahawks fall out of the winless column, and the Lions beat them on the most electric Monday Night Football since Jared Goff and Patrick Mahomes. Jared Goff went perfect, and we're about to go perfect on our picks this week. So, week five, Cobbs, what do you love this week? Yeah, speaking of uh, we know who's who, I don't think we know who the Broncos are yet, but what a what a great win against the Jets last week. I love the Broncos minus two and a half at home against the Raiders. I think the Broncos have a good defense, maybe a great defense. I think that team that let up 70 points against the Dolphins last year must have been point shaving or something because that makes no sense. It's all the same guys, really. And the Raiders, they're at that point in the season that they seem to be every year the last two years where they're just spiraling out of control. Devontae Adams may have played his last game there. Antonio Pierce, unfortunately, may have lost the team. It was a fun story. I think it's over. Broncos are winning this game by at least a field goal. It's going to be low scoring. It's going to be boring, but I think they take care of business. Uh, Broncos minus two and a half. Fading the Raiders is never a bad idea. No, Except but, when they play the Ravens. Yeah, gritty win for the Broncos. Uh, I'm uh, I'm loving the Packers uh, and Rams over. It's at 48 and a half currently. The uh, Rams defense is atrocious. They're giving up the most rushing yards per game in the NFL, and they're giving up the second most points allowed through four weeks. Uh, and the Packers can put up points, even you know with Malik Willis at quarterback. They're a well coached uh, like. We don't know if Jordan loves me playing this week or not, but the Packers put up 22 points in the fourth quarter against the Vikings this past weekend. On the other side, Stafford's a magician. He's proven throughout his career, no matter who he's throwing to, he'll fight to the end. Uh, and I honestly, I think that he's kind of building a rapport with Jordan Whittington. And uh, look out for him to keep the chains moving in what I think is going to be a high-scoring affair. So. Yeah, I mean, DeAndre Swift, who was seemed like he was about to be out of the league two weeks ago with his 1.2 yards of carry just – popped off against that Rams defense so I definitely agree with you there Malik Willis is we have to have the conversation is Malik Willis better than Jordan Love Jordan Love threw for four touchdowns last week he's 0-2 and, and Malik Willis is 2-0 and sure yeah, I'm there's no con yeah there's no context you're right yeah no yeah no context doesn't all. matter no the Packers Jake Browning actually... is Tom Brady <laughs> <laughs> exactly all right over 48 and a half for that uh, atrocious rams defense and jordan love finally turned it on in the second half against the vikings they only lost by two so it did it was a lot closer than you would have expected but this week i love the commanders minus three they are in washington dc against the browns deshaun watson literally looks like he doesn't want to be there they their defense is really not as good as people have expected it to be this year and their offense can't produce points. Young Commanders team, this team is clicking, and Jaden Daniels is just awesome. He's electric. I love watching him play, and they got to win by three against the Browns, so I'll take the Commanders minus three. Who would have thought we'd be saying that? I know, right? It, it actually feels too easy. That's the only thing I don't like about it. It kind of does. It kind of does. I've been fading myself a lot lately, and it's kind of been working, but this one, it's I like it. You I love it, actually. Browns. You can't take the Browns. No. So. Yeah, don't think too much. All right, so... I'm going to lock in the Saints plus five and a half at Arrowhead against the Chiefs. This is another one that we wouldn't have expected to be saying at the beginning of the season, but both good defenses. The Chiefs obviously brutal loss on uh, Rashi Rice last week. It's going to be like a low scoring close game, I think, with these defenses, but 
Chiefs struggled in a similar kind of matchup last week with the Chargers. I think pay attention to the line. It may move with Kamara and Olave kind of so banged up from last week. But I think the Saints have more firepower than the Chargers. I actually think they have a good chance of winning this game outright with no receivers in Kansas City. And this might be the Devontae Adams sweepstakes bowl, as these are definitely two teams listed to potentially trade for him. So some fun stuff going on. I love the Saints with that many points. Five and a half is just too many. The Chiefs have a lot of injuries, and the Chiefs also are three plays away from being one and three. And they barely squeaked by the Chargers, with who's been beat up. I don't think the Chiefs. I mean, the Chiefs aren't as good as they, you know, they haven't looked as good as they are. Their record is four and zero, but I love the Saints getting five and a half in this spot here. Uh, I, I think the Devontae Adams sweepstake is a in, intriguing narrative. Uh, I I like that angle. It's fun. I'm locking in the Bills minus one at the Texans this week. Uh, the Bills just just got embarrassed on Monday night or Sunday night football by the Ravens. I mean, it's a tough matchup against a great young team in, in uh, Houston. It's this is probably game of the week in my eyes. I'm a Stroud boy through and through, but Josh Allen is the MVP of this league, and he's going to show why this weekend. Uh, give me the Bills in a close one. Uh, I I just think they have, are finally get up. I mean, they've already put it together, but they're going to put it together again this week, and they're going to give us a, a really good marquee performance. I think. Yeah, a little fire under their ass from from last week's loss. They were due for a letdown game. I think they'll they'll get it together. I agree. I like that. And in, in Houston, they've been disappointing from what they, they have been. Be. I mean, they they almost lost to the Jaguars. That was a, that was a way closer game than it should have been for the Texans. So I really like that. I'll I'll take the Bills in that spot all day. I am going to lock in the Cardinals plus seven and a half. So they're playing the 49ers, and they just got kind of embarrassed by Jaden Daniels and the Commanders. I mean, this is a divisional matchup, and they they had a bad showing last week, but they're fifth in the league in rushing, and the 49ers are bottom of the league when it comes to third down defense. Uh, seven and a half is a lot of points for. A divisional, a divisional matchup, and the 49ers haven't faced a QB as dynamic as Kyler Murray. Jacoby Brissett was not getting it done last week, but I'll take the Cardinals plus 7.5 uh, this week in San Francisco. You know what I love about that? What? It's the perfect do the opposite. We just talked about the Bills-Jags two weeks ago. Bills smoked the Jags. Next week happens. Bills got smoked. Jags almost beat the Texans. You got the, the same thing going on now. Cardinals got smoked. Niners had a cupcake game against the Patriots. It's that a good duty opposite spot. Yeah, we are on Cobbs. A touchdown for a divisional game, I think, is too many points. I think he's going to run God. a lot, give him trouble. I love that dude. Tyler, lock it in. Like, that's why it's a lock it in. We are on. Clark. Yeah, I like Kyler Murray. That's going to get clip. Very nice. Clark likes Kyler Murray, and we're locking in the Cardinals plus seven and a half. So now we're going to get propolicious. We are going to choose an anytime touchdown scorer. Jameson Williams cashed the bet of a lifetime for me on an anytime touchdown. It was exactly 70 yards. It was perfect. Put the ticket up there. It was sweet. Enough about that. We're on to week five. Cobbs, you are three and one on the touchdown scores on the show. So you're hot. Tell us who's speaking to you this week. Yeah, so I'm really going to test fate here. I don't know what the line's going to be on this, but we're going to go with Antonio Gibson, anytime touchdown scorer. This is where... I heard some things. I saw some tweets. Ramondre Stevenson has fumbled in each of the first four games this season. Mayo is kind of pissed off. He said he wants to get Gibson more involved. This is the kicker, though. They're playing the Dolphins. The Dolphins have allowed seven rushing touchdowns in four games. They're down a lot of guys on defense. Everyone's talking about Tua. They're down a lot of guys on defense. They just got torched by Mason Rudolph and the Titans. Gibson's going to get more reps. This rushing defense has been terrible. The value is going to be great. Antonio Gibson, anytime touchdown. It's crazy. It's gross. I can't argue with it's crazy, it's gross, and the value will be great. That is all I have to say. It's we'll going see. to be a heat check. It's going to be a heat check. Yeah, it's a heat check. I'm well, pulling up from the logo. I love it. I love it, though. I mean, if you're hot, you know, you, you ride it, see what happens. Get the value out there. Yeah, Cobbs, I, I don't know about that. Uh, you know what I do know <laughs> is that uh, Josh Jacobs is due. Now, uh, the, Packers, the Packers are averaging the second most rushing yards in the league. Uh, per game this year and like I said earlier the Rams are giving up the most rush yards per game uh Jacobs hasn't scored all season I feel like he's going to be gashing them all day long he's due Josh Jacobs anytime touchdown has he really not scored Mm -mm. no touchdown I have too many shares of Josh Jacobs in fantasy to know that he has not scored a touchdown yet that's crazy I thought that was first you're due Cobbs you're due 
Yeah. It, maybe it's uh, his first receiving touchdown of his career. He he is the NFL player with the most receptions in a career with no receiving touchdown. So maybe he breaks it. Who knows? That's a fun I remember fact. hearing that. that. Yeah. yeah. Jared Goff has more receiving touchdowns than him. <laughs> it's messed up. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Tariko dropped that stat on the in the Brazil game, I remember, and that also blew my mind. But I like him to get in the end zone. Um, so I have a question for you guys as we're getting propolicious. Who is – the most selfish, most egotistical player that you know. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, exactly. Holy shit. He's going to London, and he has the ego. He has the biggest ego that I've ever seen, and he's a little bit selfish, and he's a little bit sick of the New York Jets organization, the coach. You can just tell, you know, the, the quote of his press conference was, do you have to change your cadence? He's like, well, that's one way to do it, or you could hold everybody accountable. And I think he's going to take matters into his own hands in London in front of an international crowd, all eyes on him. It could be his last international game of his career, and he's going to say, fuck it, I'm scoring a touchdown, I'm Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers to score a touchdown, probably way more value than anything that you're thinking about. You thought Antonio Gibson was crazy. <laughs> I mean, I I just, tell you, I'd love to see a discount double check. I haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, so that'd I, be cool. it has everything to do with him just being a dickhead, but I'm taking him to score a touchdown in London. Why not? Yeah, cool. Maybe, maybe the news about his bum knee is smoke, you know? Who knows? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, I got, well, there, go ahead. I took Hunter Henry last week for the value, and I mean, I, didn't, I think that game was not on red zone enough for me to even see. I'm pretty sure Hunter Henry didn't come close to scoring a touchdown. Actually, so Austin Hooper scored, so you weren't that yes, far off. that's what it was. You were not I, that the far other, off. The other tight end for the Patriots scored, so yeah, eh, would have been more know. value. So you're you're chasing the value. We're not not really using the logic, but you know what does use a lot of logic is the immaculate teaser. And I sold the immaculate teaser last week. My apologies, but come on, Bills plus eight and a half. Like we all like that. But this True. week we're going to be simpler. We're not going to just rely on one team. We're going to rely on two teams. And I'm going to tease the over in the Bengals Ravens game. Right now, it's at 48 and a half. You can tease it down to 42 and a half. Give me like a 23-20. Both these offenses have really heated up, especially after week one. Bengals D has obviously struggled a ton. Even Andy Dalton was kind of lighting it up on them last week in Carolina. But Bengals back on track offensively for sure. Ravens, I mean, you've seen what they've been doing the last couple weeks. There's going to be enough points in this game to get past 42 and a half. I think it's pretty safe. Bengals defenses look trash, and that line also opened at 50 and a half. It is now down to 48 and a half, so you're getting two more points than you need, and you're teasing it. I like it. I love it. I also love the uh, teasing the under in the Dolphins and Patriots. Neither Stinky. offense, yeah, neither offense can do anything. Uh, the Patriots may have lost their best offensive lineman in David Andrews, their center. Uh, and I don't know where this nickname come, came from, but Tyler Snoop Huntley <laughs> Snoop <laughs> uh, didn't show much improvement from Skylar Thompson on, on Monday night. I mean, don't watch this game for your mental health. It won't be fun, but just make sure you take the under. Yeah, why do Jeez, they call him Snoop? Because he yeah. the Snoopy football scene, fucking Charlie Brown. They, they're pulling <laughs> the ball away. Dude, he's a Pro Bowl quarterback, man. Put some respect on his name. Yeah, God, what a joke that, that honor is. Mac Jones, too. True. Jesus. Well, this uh, this immaculate teaser is not a Pro Bowl immaculate teaser. It's going to be a Hall of Fame immaculate teaser after it smacks. We got the over in the Bengals Ravens, and we got the under in the Patriots Dolphins. I'm going to keep it simple. Although I love the overs and unders, I'm just going to take the Seahawks to beat the Giants. Um, the Seahawks. There was questions about their legitimacy of a football team. They, I said earlier that they got out of the winless column. They actually got out of the lossless column uh, with their first loss on Monday night. But they looked really good. They hung in there with the Lions' offense. A um, couple penalties on fourth down here and there that prevented them from winning the game. But I think they're very legit. And you know, the Giants. They have um, you know shown a little bit more than what we thought they were. They beat the Browns. But with that being said, Malik neighbors might not play listen they might cover six and a half but that's why the immaculate teaser you just buy down six points seahawks to win i don't see how that loses any of them yeah i mean the seahawks have got to get a few guys back on defense too i think they were down six starters by the end of that game because uh one of their safeties got hurt too against the lions so they did hang in while the offense was cooking gino he's always a superhero in detroit for whatever reason so good confidence booster going into a, a giants game they should win in Seattle too, right? 
Yes, in Seattle. Yeah. I like that. It's a long trip from New York to Washington State. So, Well, that re- does wrap up a great episode 2.5. Boys, we are hot in Michigan. The Tigers are in the playoffs. Lions coming off a bye. Michigan State has a big game against Oregon this week, so they might even win at the rate this is going. But we are on. We're back. And we'll see you next week for episode 2.6. Lock it in. <laughs>